awareness, and exercise. Increase the blood flow to the organs, increase the oxygenation, and you know that all the data shows that it lowers almost every single disease that we've got. Um, so if we're trying to just support the thyroid, I just want you to see, it's not just about giving a hormone. You must look at the specific nutrients needed the radiation these people may be exposed to. Thyroid gland is a very, very sensitive organ, and the stress. Uh, our practice has a number of different kinds of things that are possible in it, and we try to put a plan together from the beginning. I'm going to be going through some cases right now, but just to show you an example, we started in 2005 with about five patients per month and went to about 80 patients, new patients a month, and uh, this was despite dropping insurance, which I realized wasn't working initially. Um, so there is a demand for this, and I can tell you even with the economy the way it is, we've still seen a demand for this. People want to feel better. Um, um, all of us working here, this is the dean, if you see in the front, this is the dean of the UCF Medical School. All of us working here are in the process of gathering data in our own offices that we must start to get research grants for. There are small business information technology grants at NIH that we all qualify for. And uh, it's critical that 20 years down the line we're not telling the story that, oh, well, you know, I treated a thousand patients this way and they all did great. And then it's back to just being not in the literature. So we all have that responsibility to do that and I encourage all of us to do that. Um, our sequence, we do an initial consult. We always ask people to rate themselves on a scale of one to 10 on energy, sleep, pain, mood, things that we continue to follow every visit. Hormonal testing, nutritional testing, I like to get a bone density as a baseline. You've got to have some method of looking at what the organs are doing. And I can tell you, if your bone is declining and bone starts to decline somewhere in the mid-30s, you can be rest assured that every other organ is facing exactly what that bone is doing your heart, your brain, and everything else. So it's a good gauge. Um, we do a physical exam on every patient and give them a written plan of action. And our patients usually see us at four-week intervals until they're symptom-free. This usually means about four months of visits, and then they start to see us twice a year. And most people are very, very comfortable with this. Um, we ask them to rate on a scale of 1 to 10 all of these progesterone deficiency symptoms, estrogen deficiency, uh, vaginal dryness, brain fog. My patients taught me that name, but I think I know what it means now because so many people have come in through the door saying it. Um, loss of libido, uh, and of course, the thyroid deficiency symptoms. And what I want to tell you about thyroid deficiency, the top symptoms you're going to see are fatigue, memory, mental clarity, focus concentration, depression, and motivation. I don't feel like doing anything. Um, and then weight gain in about 30% of people and all the other symptoms. What happens with the thyroid is that the thyroid is one of the, thyroid function is extremely sen sensitive to stress. So in our lifetimes, we go through many periods of thyroid dysfunction, usually around the teens as we're stressed out about what college to go or which boyfriend to have, and then in the 20s, what are we going to be, and then in the 30s when the children don't act right, and on and on. So basically, thyroid goes up and down, and what you're going to find is that this is one of the ones that also bounces back as the stress goes down. So anytime we're treating someone for thyroid, we're also dealing with treating them for adrenal and vice versa. Um, a, a typical case, this woman comes in, a 45-minute consult. She's complaining of insomnia, sleep quality is 4 out of 10, anxiety is 7 out of 10. She's having panic attacks two to three times a month. She's actually gone to the emergency room, had several cardiac evaluations. We've actually now had a, a couple of emergency room doctors who've recognized that they should send them for an emergency consult to our medical center. It's so funny after their cardiac workup. But this is, this is what she presented with. And then the energy, four out of 10 in the morning and two out of 10 in the afternoon, heavy menstrual period, recent anemia from bleeding, and a history of breast cysts and ovarian cysts. Most of us are going to here recognize this as a progesterone deficiency. What the patient came in with is what we expect, however. Ambien, Xanax, uh, antidepressant, Provera. She was offered endometrial ablation, even offered a hysterectomy. This is the usual time, and she was on iron. 
Uh, we do discuss how we are going to be dealing with all five areas of this model with each patient and the function of getting all the hormones in balance and uh, provided her with literature and a five-point plan, which is absolutely an aha moment for these patients.